Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. Um, this is my second uh, video in my sub-series on integration and my series of first-year calculus. I'm actually starting a new sub, sort of sub-sub-series on numerical integration. Before I actually get into analytic in integration, which as I mentioned in my last video is really just the opposite of differentiation, I first want to do a series, uh, a short series of videos on numerical integration, also known as Riemann integration. And I think the simplest examples of that are what are known as the lower and upper Darboussums. So anyway, let's begin. So uh, uh, Darboussums are an example of what's called a Riemann sum. Sometimes people call them, uh, well, the, the limit is what's called a Riemann integral, which is really just the same thing as the integral. But the idea is, remember an integral, a definite integral is just an area under a curve. Well, how do we compute that area without knowing the fundamental theorem of calculus? Well, we, uh, we can compute it using uh, the method of exhaustion, which is basically what the ancient Greeks, what Archimedes did when he estimated pi. We uh, approximate the area by uh, sum of areas of, uh, of rectangles. And... Um, I think it's pretty, uh, it's pretty um, obvious how that works. I mean, what you do in general is you, you, you have your, uh, your um, region, which you want to compute the area, which I call I here. If you look at these pictures on the bottom, the, on the left, we want to compute this, this uh, area, which I'm calling I because it's an integral, a definite integral. And the way we do that is we uh, replace the uh, region by a bunch of uh, rectangles, a bunch of subregions, if you like, each of which is a narrow rectangle. And the way we get the heights of those rectangles is we just take a point, I guess in this case they're showing the lower Darboussin, but you don't have to do that. You can take an arbitrary point, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in the uh, subinterval defined by these rectangles. Uh, you know, you just take a value of xi, which is some value of x between the lower and upper limits of x of each rectangle, and uh, you, you compute f of x sub i, that's the uh, height of this rectangle you're using. And uh, if, you, if you just add all those areas, you get this thing called a Riemann sum, which I'm calling s. So uh, it, as an equation, we say s is the sum the sigma is a summation notation. We say S is the sum as K is going from 1 to capital N. I'm assuming we have capital N uh, um, subregions, each of the same width. They don't have to be the same width, by the way. You can define general Riemann sums where the where the uh, subintervals don't have the same width necessarily. I like using uh, subintervals with the same width. I've never seen any advantage of using uh you know, subintervals with different widths, but you can do it that way if you want, as long as you let the width of each subinterval go to zero as n goes to infinity. That's when you get the limit, which is equal to i. But anyway, this is an approximation. So we have the sum as k goes from 1 to n of f sub x sub k. That's just the, the height of each rectangle. And then we're multiplying that by the width of each rectangle, which I'm calling delta x. And delta x, that's easy to calculate, that's just b minus a over capital N, because the, the width of the entire, entire interval is b minus a, and then we're dividing that by capital N, that's the number of subintervals. So that's how that works, pretty straightforward. You just get this nice formula, which is called a Riemann sum. And you can calculate that. That's the nice thing about this. You can actually do numerical calculations. And you don't even have to know how to analytically integrate your function. That's another nice thing about Riemann sums, Riemann integrals. Uh, there are some functions, it turns out, some analytic functions. I think the, uh, the, the easiest example, the one you'll probably see the most, is the... Uh, the normal distribution, the Gaussian distribution, which is e to the minus x squared up to a numerical factor. Turns out there's no analytic, we don't have an analytic formula for integrating that function. So it's known as a special function called the error function. Uh, it's not, it's not an a elementary function. So there are integrals of some elementary functions that are not elementary themselves. But you can still use this method. 
of Riemann uh, integration to, um, to approximate the value of those integrals. So that's a nice thing. And anyway, uh, let's just, uh, uh, so, you know, and then uh, Darboux sums are, uh, are specific examples of Riemann sums. Those are just ones where we take, they're, they're called, I call them L and U here. L is the lower uh, Darboux sum, and U is the upper Darboux sum. These give you sharp lower and upper bounds. These are nice, even though they're very crude estimates in general of the value of I, the value of the integral you're trying to calculate. Uh, they, they give you sharp lower bounds and upper bounds. That's why they're nice. It's always true that L is less than or equal to I is less than or equal to U. Um, usually they're strict uh, inequalities. Uh, but uh, it's pretty easy to see that L, if you just take L as the, uh, the sum, the uh, lower Darboux sum is the one you get when you take the minimum value of X uh, in each subinterval. And U is the one, one you get where you take the maximum value of X in each subinterval. And I think it's pretty clear to see that if you do that, for, for instance, for L, each of these bars, each of these... Uh, um, rectangles in this case is going to lie completely within your region, properly within the region that you're trying to integrate. So since it's a subregion, then that means its area is less or less than or equal to. Could be equal in some extreme cases, but it's always it's always no bigger. It's always less than or equal to i. So it's pretty clear that l is less than or equal to i. And similarly, if you take the maximum value of uh, of f of x on each uh, subinterval, you're going to get uh, something that's bigger, or, or at least um, greater than or equal to uh, what you started with. So u has to be greater than or equal to i. So that's kind of nice. We've bounded our integral. Even if we have no idea how to integrate this function, we can still come up with sharp lower and upper bounds on, uh, on its value just by using these uh, Darboux sums. So anyway, that's the idea. So now let's just jump into some examples. I'm going to start with a very simple example. Suppose we're integrating the function f of x equals x. I already gave this example in the last video I made. This region is just a right triangle. So we're integrating x from 0 to 1. That, that region is just a right triangle um, with uh, a base 1 and height 1. So obviously its area is 1 half. Um, but suppose we didn't know that. Suppose we were kind of dumb here. And suppose we wanted to estimate. Suppose we also didn't know how to do, you know, analytic integration. Uh, how would we, how would we approximate this? And, and suppose we'd also didn't know the formula for the area of a triangle. We're assuming we're pretty dumb here. But, but we can still use, uh, uh, these uh, lower and upper Darbu sums to come up with, uh, with sharp uh, um, limits, lower limits and upper limits of this area. So let's do that. So uh, let's just apply the formula I just wrote down. L is equal, and, and you, have to, you, know, you have to know what these x sub i's are. So I'm assuming n equals 10. I'm assuming that we've divided our integral interval into 10 subintervals. So uh, x sub uh, uh, yeah, so, so the, um, the, the, so the kth of these subintervals will just go from k minus 1 over 10 to k over 10, or if you like, 0 0.1 times k minus 1 to 0 0.1 times k for k going from 1 to 10. Uh, and then the, uh, the uh, uh, minimum value of f of x, which is just x on that interval, is just going to be 0 0.1 times k minus 1, and the maximum value is going to be 0 0.1 times k. So now we have all the information we need to compute these Darbu sums. So let's do it. Let's do L first to show how to do this calculation. Uh, you're just summing from k equals 1 to 10, f of f sub k, but that's just x sub k. And we, we already said x sub k is 0 0.1 times k minus 1. And don't forget, you have to multiply each of these things by the width of your interval, which in this case is 1 tenth, or 0 0.1, if you like, since there's 10 um, sub intervals and uh, when you do all the math what you end up with is 0 0.45 so that that's a lower bound and uh, you know it's very obvious that the actual answer is 0 0.5 if you did the same thing to get the uh, upper uh, u the the upper uh, darbu approximation you would find you get 0 0.55 
And it's kind of interesting in this case because the the actual uh, answer is exactly halfway between these two extremes, 0 0.5. Um, it's usually not going to be exactly halfway, but it's always uh, between the lower and upper bounds. Um, anyway, that's an easy example. And uh, uh, let's do a little bit more complicated example. Let's do x squared. So this time our region is the region under a parabola from from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And in the last video I made, uh, I, uh, I uh, said that was equal to 1 third. We had to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to get that result, though. And really, we shouldn't be doing that at this point because I haven't proven the fundamental theorem of calculus yet. That'll, that'll do in a few more lessons. But uh, anyway, uh, this is probably a better example because this is one, if you didn't know how... Uh, how to, you know, the fundamental theorem of calculus, you might have to do it this way. So let's just do it this way again. Same idea. Our, our, our uh, lower and upper bounds are uh, on x are the same as they were last time. Our bounds on f of x, since f of x is x squared, we have to uh, square the values of the, of the minima and maxima, the, the, the x sub k's. So this time our sum is going to look like uh, 0 0.01 times k minus 1 quantity squared times 0 0.1. This is L, the lower uh, bound estimate. And when you simplify all that and, and, and calculate it, you get 0 0.285. Um, that's a lower bound on the area, on the uh, actual value of I. And you could do the same thing uh, to get the upper bound. If you did that, you would get 0 0.385. So we know that the actual answer is somewhere between 0 0.285 and 0 0.385. Those aren't very tight lower and upper bounds. You could get much tighter ones if you increased n. Uh, but I don't want to do that here. Uh, it turns out that, you know, is it, the, the bigger, the more, the more you increase n. In general, this is true. You can take a limit as n approaches infinity. This is the definition of a Riemann integral, by the way. I haven't defined Riemann integrals yet, but a Riemann integral is just the limit of a Riemann sum where the number of uh, subintervals goes to infinity. And if the function is well-behaved, there are some functions where this doesn't work, but if it's a well-behaved uh, integrable function, then it turns out that the Riemann integral is equal to the actual value of the integral. This is a way you can define integration. So um, anyway, just a little heads up on that. But uh, it turns out in this case, as we saw in the last video, I made the actual uh, value of i is one third, um, which is very close to halfway between um, l and u in this case. L was 0 0.285 u is 0 0.385, I guess exactly halfway between will be 0 0.335, but the actual answer is one-third, which is 0 0.3 repeating, which is pretty close to that. So anyway, I think you see how this works now. And that concludes my video on, on uh, um, upper and lower Dabur sums. Uh, thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.